And it's on the ideology of the microbiome that you see or, or the gut bacteria uh, with people with uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So you're, you talked about yeast and candida and different mycotoxicity. Um, what are some of the other ideology that you see? Maybe some low um, probiotic strains that are part of the ideology. Maybe you could speak to that a bit for me. Um. I would say, I mean, well, mercury, we talked about one, right? But people often won't put it together. So mercury and any other kind of um, environmental uh, poisoning and toxin, um, which can be in your water supply, can be in your air, there can be mold, right, in the walls or the, the floor of your house, the carpets, you know, all of these types of things can put either um, a low-grade continual stress or they can actually be a single causative explosive substance, right? And it just depends on, again, where you're at and how much there is and what your exposure level is. Uh, microwave radiation, so Wi-Fi, cell phones. Um, I've been banging on about this for, I don't know, eight or nine years now, but nobody's listening. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, not even my own kids. My own kids fight me every day. Why can't we have Wi-Fi in the house? But it's, it's a stressor. It's um, something that our cells don't recognize that wavelength pattern and they armor, so they harden. Well, if you've got cell walls that are hardening, you don't have adequate detoxification pathways, you don't have adequate nutrition, respiration, all that type of stuff happening. And we have tons of studies on animals and plants showing the effects of Wi-Fi and cell phones. So my way around that is I don't have Wi-Fi in my house. Everything's hardwired. Nobody's allowed to have their cell phone on in the house. Outside, you can't control it, right? It's everywhere. So outside, I've experimented with this and I tell my body, we're safe let the waves pass through us and out the other side. You don't need to armor. It's okay. Because every nighttime or whatever part of the day when you go home, you have a place to repair and rejuvenate. And I think that's what's key to preventing. I think, I think that, you know, I, I tell my kids, I'm like, you know what you're saying to me is, you know, when I was a kid, everybody smoked, you know, and you remember the ads and they're blowing smoke into the face of a baby, showing you how safe it is. This is not a, you're a medical doctor. I'm a medical doctor and I smoke. I mean, those ads are still out there on the internet. That's what Wi-Fi is today. Everybody's telling you how safe it is. And nobody's actually looking at the research. And if they did, and the industry is paying massive amounts of money to have all the, the research killed, so you don't ever see it in any media unless you're actually looking for it, I said, you're saying to me, let's have everybody, all four of you smoking in my house. Well, I'm moving out, sorry. That's, that's not, so again, cigarette smoke, right? Everybody knows how that triggers um, colitis and Crohn's. Now it may have a calming effect because of the nicotine to the smoker, but at the same time it has a damaging effect. So, then, so those are all your environmental and then your foodborne toxins, right? Your, and everything you put on your skin, your, your shampoo, your body lotion, um, microwave foods, chlorine, all the heavy metals, your furniture, your cosmetics, like everything is absorbed by the skin, the lungs. It all creates your matrix that either supports your healing or makes it harder. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you're trying to hear something, you have all these things that are knocking your body down and giving your body additional stuff to fight against, you know, it's just going to take you longer and maybe you'll never fully get there. Um, then we have all the pathogens and parasites. So we have all of those causative factors that are in the body themselves. And again, whether you were breastfed, whether you had a vaginal birth versus cesarean, so you were lacking that foundational bacteria right from the start, those have play into the etiology of these diseases. Uh, then you have things like vaccination, right? So seeding the body with latent proviruses, all the adjuvants that they add to the vaccines like mercury and, you know, taken out mercury, they've replaced it with other things. Vaccines are also cultured using foreign genetic materials. So you're putting like monkey genes into your body. And I mean, you're just putting these challenges on the immune system that, you know, we're not really 
humans have never dealt with these things before. And so I look at all of these things and, and I say, you know, these are, and then of course, of course, antibiotic use, right? And, and when you received antibiotics, were they followed with high dose therapeutic probiotics? Pretty much nobody except my kids maybe. <laughs> so, and my pets, even my animals, my animals ever get exposure to, they get their probiotics, you know, high dose for at least a few weeks and then ongoing for about three months to put that good bacterial flora back in. Um, so you have all of these things kind of swirling together. And then for each person, there's gonna be a different mix of those that trigger their particular biome or their particular mind body makeup because let's say you just have antibiotics and child abuse like physical or sexual abuse for some person that's enough those two things are all you need to have crohn's or colitis um, for some people they're fine totally fine i hear from elderly people all the time i've never had a gut problem in my life and i went for my my you know scheduled colonoscopy which the doctor told me and now i have colitis yeah, because they can't sterilize the colonoscopes, which again, most GIs don't even know about, but it's there. Look through all the infectious, uh, infectious uh, medical journals, infectious disease, infectious microbiology. All the data is there. The sterilant that they do use, which gets most of it, is called glutaraldehyde. Glutaraldehyde, the, the hospital personnel, face masks, and have extra thick rubber gloves, because if you touch it, it burns your skin. They're bathing the colonoscope in that and then shoving it up your rectum. Glutaraldehyde alone causes colitis. So you have medical procedures, exploratory and diagnostic tests and preventative procedures that are stripping your bacterial flora, because you, you know the test prep, you have to clean out your colon. So now you got nothing in there, and now I'm gonna put an infected disease scope in there that's been soaked in a substance that causes burning on contact. You know, it's just insane the types of things that we do that all contribute. And again, you know, depending on where your body is, where your microbiome's at, what you follow it, what your diet is, you know, and, and what you're normally, you can, it's amazing how resilient our bodies actually are. You know, that they didn't, everybody isn't breaking down like long ago. And, you know, you realize, wow, the body actually has a very strong self-healing um, capability. And we just, we really have to assault it to get to this level. Or have a triggering emotional event, right? With just one or two things. Very so. challenging to be healthy in this world. And so... In order to not get disease, we have to do so much. Yes. In such a world with so much electromagnetic frequency and pollution. And, and I, I have been avoiding colonoscopies for a long, long time. And I actually had a sigmoidoscopy scheduled, and I think I will cancel it again. So thank you for that reminder, because I had read a couple articles on that whole thing and so i'm assuming you don't get checkups and haven't for many many decades so no i have not i think oh when was my last one 35 years ago maybe um but for the sigmoidoscopy if your body wisdom is telling you to do that they have disposable sigmoidoscopes mm -hmm. so you can make sure you say uh it must be disposable and then i have a blog post on i just call it dangers of colonoscopy and in there I have a report and it gives you a procedure to follow pre and post. So if you do decide to get that done, just follow the procedure before the, before the sigmoidoscopy and afterwards, and that will greatly lessen uh, the impact and the risks. Great information, Jenny. Thank you. Would you have a couple last pearls of wisdom for us here today? Well, I just think you should get your stuff out there. I, I love what you're talking about, about the recipes and the approach of, um, you know, like seeing that as, as your little crystal ball in your gut. I mean, that is amazing of this, this gift of this, whoop, you need to set a boundary, whoop, you need to, like your gut tells you instantly. And I think that, I think that's huge. I think there's a big audience for that message. Um, that's a book I would be all over recommending to my people because it's a missing piece. And if they can just have a perspective shift 
that alone will change their lives. Regardless of everything else you're putting in the book, that piece would be enough to change their lives. Um, a recipe book, if you can come up with that, and I don't know if it'll work, but you have my Listen to Your Gut book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you can um, tag the recipes according to which one is safe for the reduced diarrhea diet, which one is safe for the minimized gas and bloating diet, because uh, I give a, a booklet that comes with the book. I don't know if you received that. There's a healing recipe booklet on there. And I've, I've said, and then I changed the, it's the same recipe, but I've changed it slightly as to whether, which diet you're on. But if you could have a recipe book where you also have some of them or a lot of them tagged to which diet, then we could, I could abs, I, I mean, I've got readers who would buy it tomorrow. And that's a resource that, you know, is definitely needed. Um, and something else. I'm really excited about that. I would love to, you know, help get that out there because, you know, like I said, if I can point people to something that's already there, I'd rather do that than me having to do it myself. And I think you're, I love the space you're coming from. And, you know, I can see there's a total resonance um, with everything that you're saying and I'm saying. So I would be so on board for, for helping you get your stuff out there. This. Thank you. That might be our next ebook. This book, a book is called Inspire Me. So it's, it's basic um, plant-based, mostly live food recipes that I can't say are safe for anyone with Crohn's and Claudius. No. It's more of an inspiration book on really clean, beautiful, rainbow food, incorporating, mm -hmm. you know, juice cleansing and stuff like that. But I certainly will give that a lot of energy because that was where I was a bit, um, it's, it's such a diverse disease. And for me, I had, I had very little problem with fiber except for the very beginning times when I'm, or in and out of acute flare up where I go to just liquid for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas my girlfriend who has Crohn's can't handle any fiber and still can't after seven, eight years. I know part of it is because she keeps telling herself that. I know that's a huge part of it. And, I, and I, when I bring that to her attention, she doesn't want to hear it. She's got this uh, primal diet down pat. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite curious about the whole mind-body thing almost more than anything and the whole yeah. gut-heart-brain connection because I do know that she hasn't wavered much from her primal diet, which is raw meat, raw cream, raw milk, raw some probiotics, a little bit of, little bit of uh, fiber food, because she's told herself for eight years, if she goes off it, she'll be sick. So I would never, ever want to tell myself that because I love food and I love the diversity of food too much. Me too. You know the power of what I tell myself. Exactly. So, exactly. Thank you. Well, it's interesting. You might want to go on my blog and Google um, food allergy because um, – and there's two posts where I pulled in um, a, this one gal. She has a PhD in uh, immunology and experimental medicine. Beautiful. And then another gal who she's been a holistic health counselor and she teaches cooking. And so she's been focused on the whole food aspect of helping people regain their health through food. So we pulled in the three of us to go, okay, we need to talk about this freaking food allergy stuff because there's there's something wrong with what everyone's saying. And these IG and these IG blood, IGA blood tests, like there's something wrong with that too, because, you know, I've had all of them done and it gives you this list and, and I'm like, I'm not allergic to that. I know because I've done the gold standard, which is to do an elemental diet, eliminate all foods and then put them back in one by one and then test. And then also nobody's talking about the fact that your tolerance is variable according to your stress levels. And your tolerance it can also be, right, it can also be cumulative. So you may tolerate something in this amount three times a week. But if you have it four, now you're intolerant. So no one's talking about those levels of tolerance. So then it's not about making our lives like your friend, making her life as barren as possible <coughs> in order to stay safe. It's about entering more into that dialogue and saying, well, I really love that thing. Maybe I can have it once a week. Maybe I can have it once a month. But I don't have to deny myself. So I'm not in austerity. I'm in abundance. I'm in, you know, like when you talked about food. and How can I make this food that I love into something that I can make that's healthy? That's where my passion is. How yeah. can I teach you how to make this amazing pizza 
that's raw yeah. and with gluten and all these nutrients. Yeah. yeah. The opposite of deprivation, because I, I still don't feel anything but deprived, but yeah. Exactly. And when you feel deprived, if you think about deprivation, that's a contracting, clamping state. What's your gut doing? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, what have you just introduced energetically as a reality in existence for your body? Really? Does that, does that feel like flow and vibrancy and vitality and abundance? No, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm totally with you there. And so anything like that, that you can um, produce, uh, I would love to be able to get out to, um, you know, all of my people and my readers. I think that'd be amazing. I fully support you to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.